Change of plan, crew. Chart a new course. Take me to the first frontier. I'm sorry, sir. It sounded like you said the first frontier. Don't you mean the final frontier? I made no mistake, crew. Take me to the first frontier. Captain, this is illogical. <laughs> when was this show ever logical? Set course for Abilene! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Abilene sits in the middle of what's known as Texas's big country. It's sorta north of the hill country, but south of the panhandle, west of the east, and east of the west. Expect at least a two hour drive from any major city, but also expect big skies, big legends, and one heck of a big day trip. While it may look civilized now, this whole area used to be the wild frontier, a land dominated by buffalo and tread by cowboys and Indians. Today, it's hard to imagine given Abilene's bustling downtown. However, lucky for us trippers, the spirit of the West is still alive and well at one of my favorite museums in the state, Frontier, Texas. This museum is dedicated to retelling the entire story of the Texas frontier from every angle, which is actually much more interesting and complex than you might realize. Complex is an understatement. It's a tall order to capture the frontier in one museum, but Frontier Texas does an amazing job, starting at the very beginning, before Texas was really a frontier at all, but the well-traveled homeland of the first characters in this story of the frontier. Expert hunters and gatherers. These native tribes lived in a delicate balance with the land. But then, foreign and strange settlers began to arrive. Oh, we finally made it. A place to call our own. Who? What are you doing here? Well, uh, we're not causing problems, just looking for some land to own. You can't own land. And what's he doing here? Me? Uh, nothing. Hey, he's killing our buffalo. I'm not killing any buffalo. But he was, by the thousands. The Indians' entire way of life completely changed when settlers started claiming land and killing buffalo. Some of the tribes were extremely angry, and it's not hard to understand why. The buffalo was the Plains Indians' way of life, not just as a food source, but housing, tools, weapons, clothing, and the decimation of the buffalo gave rise to another player in our story, the angry Native Indian. You kill buffalo, we kill you. Not if I kill you first! Whoa, uh, this escalated quickly. Uh, maybe we can work this out. And so the battles began, with the Comanches being known as the fiercest on the plains. Look at this, these are three real scalps found on the shield of a dead Indian chief. Real. Conflict and bloodshed became a way of life. Settlers lived under constant fear of attack from the native tribes, who were losing everything. Most importantly, the buffalo. Mountains of skulls littered the landscape. And as you can imagine, violence didn't slow down. To protect its settlers, the US began establishing forts with armed soldiers that slowly pushed the Indians off the land. Now, now, hold on, gents. I'm with the US Army. What seems to be the problem here? And then came the cowboys and cattle drives. Whoa, whoa, boys, I hope y'all don't mind. Uh, I'll just be passing through, driving all these steers north and stagecoaches. Now, you aren't gonna shoot me if I try to deliver this mail, are you? The natives were outnumbered. The onslaught of activity wasn't stopping, and by many measures, the settlers were winning the battle for the frontier. The Wild West was slowly being tamed, yet in some ways, it was as rowdy as ever. All this gave way to the Wild West that we think of. Shootouts, poker games, cowboy towns. It's an incredible story, and this museum is a must-see for anyone who cares about Texas. What's most moving about Frontier Texas are the true, first-hand accounts of the frontier. Real stories of real people caught in the middle of this epic struggle. And after visiting, you can walk away with your own first-hand account 
of what it was like on the vast Texas frontier. As the Wild West faded, what dealt the final death blow to the frontier wasn't the steel from a rifle, but the steel of the railroad. The coming of the railroad changed everything. Suddenly the world was a much smaller place. Travelers could reach distant cities in days, not weeks. Goods could be shipped and sold all over the state of Texas. And something as small as candy could travel far and wide. From train depots just like this one, anything could be sent off to see the world. And for over a hundred years, Valida's has been doing just that. Almond toffee, toffee pretzels, caramel pecan tads. I'm not real sure what a tad is, but it looks delicious. Originally started by the Valida brothers, who immigrated from Greece in the early 1900s, this store isn't just classic Abilene. It's the vintage candy of an entire generation. They make all of this stuff right here in house. Ooh, look here, peanut brittle, the classic. What this place has been making for 100 years, delicious. I wonder how they make it. Let's go ask them. Looks like I found the right person to ask. This is Peyton, and looks like I'm in for a lesson. Okay, today, Chet, we're gonna make some peanut brittle. Awesome, all okay, right. Let's do it. Okay. I'll show you how. I mean, this really is the old fashioned way to doing things. We start with the base of the corn syrup. That is thick. Yes, it is. Whoa, <laughs> big gooey glob of goodness. Looks like slime. Well, next, we're gonna add the sugar. Right, because when you have a giant bowl of corn syrup, the first thing you need to add is sugar on the top of the corn exactly. syrup. Exactly, <laughs> we have to make it sweeter. <laughs> now that we've added the sugar, we're gonna add the water. Okay. All right, now we're gonna add a heaping bowl of peanuts. And just a bowl full of peanuts? Bowl full of peanuts. Of course. That's how we do it now. <laughs> we don't do cups, we do everything by bowls. <laughs> I that's, love it. I that's love it. it. We're going to set it on the fire, then we're going to use this big old paddle. <laughs> you could move a canoe with that thing. Yes. And how long does it cook? This cooks about an hour. Okay. About 45 minutes to an hour. Now, while the peanut roll is cooking, we have to oil this old marble table. Usually, you're cleaning messes up off the table. Here, we just get to make a big old mess on the table. It's like playing. Every square millimeter of this table has been sufficiently oiled and prepped. Bring on the brittle. Now that it's the right temperature, we're about to add the rest of the ingredients. A little magic powder they kept secret from us. And then, this. Oh, it just totally changed colors on us. Told you oh, it would, now remember? look at it, it's growing. All right, I'm gonna back up out of this part and just let the professionals do their work. Oh, cool. Okay, now we're gonna take that scraper. Okay. We're gonna push all the brittle down. And before our eyes, the marble table sucks the heat from the peanut goo. And within minutes, we've got peanut brittle, which leads us to the very best part. Okay, now that it's cool, do you wanna break it up? Yeah, all okay. right. Okay, go. All right. Oh, oh. There you go. Oh, there. Now that's a piece. That's, that's a, good a piece, piece right there. Yours looks a little better than mine. All right. That's okay. I guess you can eat that part. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so good. Pretty good, isn't it? Mmm, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That was fun, too. And there you have it. The perfect way to spoil lunch. A baggie for the road, please. And let's keep exploring Abilene. This city has come a long way since the frontier. Today, it has a growing population of over 100,000 people and even boasts three colleges, Abilene Christian University, Hardin-Simmons University, and McMurray University. And it must be this constant influx of youth that has created such an art squall in town. Yeah, I got myself a nine point. Die on the buffalo. And across from the National Center of Children's Illustrated Literature is a garden dedicated to one of my favorite artists, Dr. Seuss. Installed in 2012, it's one of the only Dr. Seuss sculpture gardens in the U.S. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. That's a little Lorax for you. I like this guy. The only ones not shocked by all this art are the Abilinians who live here. And this artistic energy all around town has even manifested itself in edible form at the Abbey House, where food is art 
and art is delicious. It's truly the kind of trendy, handmade, hipster local joint that you'd expect from the likes of Dallas or Austin, but it's here in Abbeytown. All right, so this is Jimbo Jackson, one of the owners of Abbey House. And this is not the kind of place people would expect to find in Abilene. So how did this get started? Well, uh, my business partner and I, we loved Abilene Tex-Mex, some of the best barbecue you can find. But there were a lot of dishes that we missed. He, he lived in New York City for eight years. My wife and I came from Raleigh, North Carolina. No cooking experience, no restaurant experience. Uh, he's, a, he's a teacher at ACU, and I was a pilot, so. We, we made a menu of all of our favorite dishes and brought them to Abilene. A menu with things like duck, lamb, smoked salmon, which they took to a chef with the scratch-made mentality, and Abbey House was born. So what all stuff do y'all make homemade? Man, we do our ketchup homemade, we do a homemade granny mustard, uh, a cilantro lime vinaigrette, our ranch dressings, we do our bread from scratch, we do homemade sausage, burgers, we grind all the meat, absolutely everything but grow the vegetables. Our clientele ranges from, you know, high school kids to, you know, retired folks, so. People love it. What did you think the first time you came here? We were shocked. Um, they raised the bar on food. The laid back, the casual, the artsy, that's something you get at Abbey House that you're not gonna find at other places. Oh, my favorite place to hang out. Really? Love it, yes. A place like Abbey House is, is just unique. It's, yeah. It's great. It's great to have a place like Abbey House here. Their approach to food just speaks to me on so many levels. It is <laughs> so fantastic. You have to agree that this homemade corn dog looks pretty fantastic. But you know how much a fan I am of smoked meats. All right, so it was tough for me to narrow down what I wanted for lunch, but I decided to go with the smoked salmon BLT. You got the bacon, the lettuce, the tomato, but then it's topped with house smoked salmon, a side of spicy kale, and some of their house made pickles. How does that sound for lunch? Delicious. The richness of that salmon, the homemade sourdough bread, the crispness of that bacon, boom, everything. You know, it's not hard to find house smoked beef in Texas, but house smoked salmon in Texas? It's like a little taste of the Pacific Northwest right here in Abilene. And to think that this place cares enough about homemade food that they even make their own pickles. Kind of bread and buttery with a little kick. I love it. I'd have no problem eating my vegetables if they always tasted like this. Spicy kale. I mean, the food really is as cool and hip as the place itself. Mmm, so good. All I can say is long live Abilene. Abilene, I can fly. So now that we've got our bellies full, let's explore another big part of Abilene's culture. It's long military history. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Dating all the way back to Fort Phantom Hill, one of the frontier military posts in the area. This one was established in 1851 to assist settlers and travelers making their way across the prairie. Soldiers at that time had a very tough job patrolling the land on foot or by horseback. But today in Abilene, well, soldiers get around a little faster. This is Dias Air Force Base, and with the friendly escort, you can get inside. Dias is the world's primary base and training facility for this aircraft right here, the B-1 bomber, capable of flying faster than the speed of sound and delivering its payload anywhere in the world. This just happens to be the first one ever delivered to Dias, making it the star of Abilene. It's awesome, isn't it? The other primary aircraft of Dias is the C-130, one of the big dog heavy lifters of our military. And with a short stroll, you can step back to the first days of Dias. So this is a B-47, which was the first bomber to serve out of Dias Air Force Base when it opened in the 1950s. It's also the first jet-powered bomber produced by the U.S. Air Force. There's the KC-135 Strato Tanker and the B-52 Strato Fortress. These bombs are disarmed, right? Okay, phew, I would hope so. All of these are just incredible to stand next to. And when one of these bad boys takes off from Dias, you can hear it for miles. But there's another much less obvious part of Abilene's military past hidden away right below our feet. This is Mark Hannafin, owner of Family Scuba Center in Midland and proud owner of the Valhalla Nuclear Missile Silo. 
You see, in the 1960s, during the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, the U.S. built 12 Atlas nuclear missile sites in Texas, including Valhalla. This was the blast doors, and this protected against a nuclear overpressure. So if you got a bomb went off outside, people inside would be safe. Okay, all right, it's good size of locks in here. That is serious steel. So you were worried about not just sending a missile, but also taking a this missile strike. Was, this was a retaliatory weapon, it's not a first strike weapon. You can feel the tension of this place and imagine the men working in 24-hour shifts just waiting for the president's green light to push the red button. It's crazy to think about, but what's even crazier is that this place is now open for scuba diving. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh, oh. This uh, hole is 174 foot deep. It's 52 foot across, and we've got about 120 feet of water in it. And of course, it's uh, completely surrounded by concrete, but concrete's not waterproof. Okay. And so the water actually comes from the groundwater around us and flows through here. So the water's replaced all the time, doesn't get stagnant. Okay, I'm kind of eager to suit up. Mark, you ready to do this? You bet. Let's all go. All right, let's go. Mark opens Valhalla by reservation only to organized groups. And today we joined up with divers from Houston, all here for the same reason we are. It's just so cool. Kind of makes me feel like a secret agent, man. Okay, okay, enough goofing off. Back to the task at hand. All right, so one of the most important things you need down here is a wetsuit. It's groundwater, so it's about 58, 60 degrees. Gets pretty chilly the longer you stay down there. Ninja style. Ooh, breathe, breathe. Let's dive. Here we go. And into the blackness we descend. And yes, the water is as cold as expected. But at around 40 feet deep, we encounter something to take our minds off the cold. A platform for the nuclear inertial navigation system. Using the North Star as a guide, the system here could aim and fire toward any target within 9,000 miles, delivering a blast 100 times stronger than the atomic bombs that ended World War II. It's pretty heavy stuff to experience in a dark, cold place like this. But now it's time to descend to the bottom, over a hundred feet down. The floor of the silo is littered with old, rusted pieces of twisted metal that somehow avoided the scrapyard to rest here in their watery grave. Maybe these pieces held the warhead in place, or perhaps they made up some fail-safe device protecting Earth from total meltdown. Nobody knows for sure, but what you do get down here is a glimpse into what our world may have looked like if a nuclear missile like this one had actually been used. Which makes me happy that this place is now a destination for exploration and not a beacon of destruction. Well, it looks like we've seen all there is down here. Time to head back up to the surface. I gotta say, even I am amazed at what you can do in Texas. One, that you could scuba dive in Abilene. Two, that you could scuba dive in a nuclear missile silo in Abilene. That definitely works up an appetite though. I'm hungry. What do y'all think? You wanna find some dinner? Well, I've got just the place in mind. So let's head a few miles south to the town of Buffalo Gap, which got its name because of the gap in the mountain range that Buffalo would funnel through on their journey north. And if you're curious about more of the town's history, well, there's no better place to learn than the Buffalo Gap Historic Village. It's full of old buildings from the last 50 years of the frontier, and each of those buildings is full of historic artifacts. Who knew the historic village could be so modern? I got an audio wand and scannable QR codes. Boop, boop, beep, boop. Now I know dusty old buildings aren't for everyone, but with a little bit of imagination, these places can be really fun. I've always wanted a horseshoe. Uh, I think just a little off the top, sir. And that, my students, is how you eat a buffalo. Is anyone listening to me? Huh? Give me all your money. Okay. Right. 
That's like seven cents. Sorry, sir. It's hard times. That's all we got. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Oh, no. I dropped it everywhere. Man, can you help me pick this up back here? No. That's fine. All right. Well, I hope things get better for you. I'll see you later. <laughs> But I won't make it far running from the law on an empty stomach. So now for the main reason we're in Buffalo Gap. Not so much historic as legendary, and it's one of the most famous ranches in Texas. A restaurant folks will drive a half an hour to just for dinner is pretty special. But well, one folks will drive two to three hours for? Well, that's Perini Ranch Steakhouse. The ranch started way back in 52, with the steakhouse first opening in 83. And that 30 years of flavor is literally fired into every delectable piece of meat Tom Perini serves. Okay, so this is Tom Perini, one of the most famous steak cooks in all of Texas. So, tell me Tom, what's your secret? We use good beef. Oh, Qual quality is always the most important thing. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. And welcome to the ranch. Well, thank you very much. Yes, the Texas hospitality around here is as thick as the steaks, which are all cooked over mesquite wood with the side seasoned in cast iron skillets. We cook the old time way. I am not a chef. I learned kind of the hard way, and the story I tell, if you put too much salt in the beans, the cowboys will tell you. <laughs> so I want food to, I want it to look good, I want it to taste good, and I want you to be able to recognize it. I hate to even say this word, but we don't have a steak sauce, we don't do any of that. I mean, this, we want the beef to speak for itself. You're my kind of man, good. my kind of man. Good. And that steak speaks loudly all over the world. So what's the farthest you've ever heard of someone driving just to eat here? Well, you know, we were laughing. Well, driving, we've had them come in from from all over. The furthest we had was in an airplane, and we had a, a client that flew from Tokyo. <laughs> to eat to have here. lunch, yeah. Oh, he did. Wow. I mean that, and then he went back the next day. So I thought that was that's, <laughs> that's incredible. Kind of yeah, story. that's a little bit flattering. It's just pure Texana, and the food's good, and the service is great. And so basically, if you're within a hundred miles of this place, you're gonna stop. What's what's your steak of choice? Ribeye. Uh -huh. Get medium rare with with Tom's rub on it. It's just unbelievable. So what brings you to Perini Ranch this evening? Well, we are camping at the Appalachian State Park, but we can't because Perini Ranch is just down the road. <laughs> I like it. So the camping is just an excuse to oh, get to eat here? Exactly. <laughs> now while steak may be the top of the food chain here, it's not all they do. And tonight, they're even frying up some catfish. But I had my mind made up a long time ago. I am taken aback at the beauty of what is in front of me. I got a chopped blue cheese salad, some of their green chili hominy, but here's the star of this show the prime rib steak. Perfectly crusted around the outside, pink and warm in the middle. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I don't even think I needed teeth for that bite. That's how tender that was. And some people may be scared of prime rib because they think it's fatty. But if the fat's cooked right, it just sort of melts like butter into the meat, gives it this amazing beefy flavor. There's not much that's more Texan than a big old juicy steak. Is like tasting a piece of Texas. Mm. This right here is one of the most delicious steaks I've ever found in the Lone Star State. What a day. Abilene was and still is the wild frontier. Whether that's the frontier of the past, a culinary frontier, or a personal frontier, doing something you never dreamed was possible. The frontier lives on, my friends, and it's called Abilene. All right, now it's time for dessert polishing off this amazing day trip with some of Perini Ranch's amazing bread pudding. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. <laughs> Reverse slam! Who knew the historic village? <laughs> all right, ready? Oh! Woo! Down a buffalo. And on 45 counts of ridiculous historical reenactments, the jury finds the day tripper. Guilty! <laughs> the cameraman made me do it! And the sound girl and the producer! Take a telegram, man. The day tripper. Stop. All new episodes coming soon. Stop. On your local television station. Stop. Support PBS.
stop. Wait, no, don't stop supporting PBS. Still support PBS. Support PBS, just stop the telegram. Yeah, okay, good. Sincerely, Chet F. Garner Tripp. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condias, amigas.